The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Tuesday, the 8th of August. We're looking at the Dow down 362 points. It's up over 400 points yesterday. Now, let me just do a couple of things here, and then I, I, there's a ton to do. So let me just go through this slowly. There was a, a – should I show it over here? Yes, I'll show it over here. Yeah, there was a Chapman wave. Red inverted Roman candle yesterday. Uh, talking about candles, uh, Teddy will be doing a webinar this coming Monday. Should be fabulous. I use a couple of candles. I've made up a couple of candles and ca a couple of candle techniques. That's all I use. But really, uh, people uh, use candles a lot. And it's the information that they give you that's so pertinent. So that should really be a terrific webinar. We're looking at this particular candle here. You see this long leg to the upside, big body to the downside, tiny little wick. So that's like a, what I call a wave Roman candle. But this is the upside down one. But when it occurs within three or four bars of a top, especially if it occurs just after a top, which it has the monthly chart, so we don't go there right now. But I have a rule of thumb, and that rule of thumb says if – Intra the very next session, doesn't matter whether if this is a daily chart, then I'll be looking at the 110 minute, uh, 120 minute chart, or even the 10 minute chart. But I'd said if for over 35 minutes at any point today, if the Dow goes over 35,370, I think 380 or 370, I said there's a really good chance it could get close to just on or just over. The high of yesterday, that's the top. That was the top at um, 35,506. And that becomes really important. Well, what did it do? It had a spectacular – I'm not even sure why it was such a spectacular day, but it ran and ran and ran. It went all the way to 35,497. Oh, yeah, six points away. And, um, and what happens today? We've given back. We've gone to below the low of yesterday. And that just says to me, this Chapman Wave Roman candle, if we close, we've got three sessions to do. Usually it's two, but I sometimes extend it like the arch formation if you take out the left side low. But I'm saying that if we close any session after this below 35,033, we're looking at something very different. And for the first time, I can say to you, the length of time is proportionate to the to this size, the width, the aperture between the green and the nine period moving average, as I get a signal, a cell signal based on a, a different technique, which I did on August the 1st on the Dow uh, intraday. Uh, we had that, although that's the day I already said, let's, let's take a short position. Um, because of this left side, right side uh, this is a quality match. How the you rally up to the first high and then the second high, the in, internal high and the residual high. And my suspicion, it's not even proven yet, but my suspicion is that that green period moving average is going to cross negative. Now, if you look at, let me just use this, at the YM, it's getting closer and closer, but it's not there yet. If you look at the ES, it's already there from yesterday. That's the um, – let's just go to the S&P. The cash – yep, the cash has done it today. The E-mini did it yesterday. Look at the uh, RTY. That is the um, – this is the IWM. This is the Russell 2000. This is the futures. So close within a fraction of turning, turning red. Uh, look at the um, – and let me go to the IWM and see if the cash is the same. Yep, cash is the same. Look at the QQQ. It already gave that signal, and it's continuing down. It hasn't done that uh, for a while. It did that just for a day back in, was it the 1st of May? No, the 27th, uh, 26th and 7th of, uh, of April. 
Uh, but when it did it last time, it held green for, look at that, green and then just two days of pink. And ever since the green turned up on the 16th of March, there's been one momentary fractional pink, and now we've got it again. I think this is going to be a little bit deeper. And yesterday I had a question about whether or not uh, what sector to short. Well, we've already done that. We've already uh, we've got our short positions. Um, one, I, I'm not sure. This was in three cases we were at highs. In in two cases we were at all time highs. You just don't do that. You just don't try to short the best of the best. But using this particular technique, I just I had no choice for subscribers because that's what we do. I try my very best to get the turning points. I know everybody says, oh, I want the middle 60 or 80 percent. I find that, yes, you can do that, but your risk is much greater because if you put a stop in, you can get taken out. But when you get the edge, right at the edge, it's it just gives you that look like yesterday's huge move up. It didn't impact us on our two key uh, shorts. It just didn't impact us because we got in right at the turning point. If you're lucky enough to be able to have a technique that just allows you to attempt to do that, you remember I got this expression when you pat yourself on the back, take your hands take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself on the back, that's when you hit the tree. Believe me, this is no pat yourself on the back situation because this is the day is young. We just you saw yesterday how big that move was to the upside. So look here the QQQ. So look at the SMHs, the semiconductors today, just turned pink. Um, these are all key to my metrics. Now, I'm going to do this quickly. I, I'm jumping the gun here because I'm not looking at uh, where did I want to go. I wanted to show you the TLT. So I had this thing for my subscribers to my opening call on, on Saturday, I, my hour-long uh, video, overview video that tells us where we've been, what we're looking at, why we're doing it, what what stocks we're looking at, what e ETFs, etc., cetera, uh, currencies, whatever it is. Like I do during the show, except this is pertinent to our positions. And look at this. In the uh, let me go to the KRE. Look, the KRE had a huge volume gap down, a uh, volume Chapman wave price volume uh, climax spike to the downside. And since then, it's over 28 days that it's been to the upside. Uh, SHW, this is the same technique. Look at that huge volume. And look from the 45 low. Back on uh, March the 13th, I think it was. Look where we are. We're at 64, starting to pull back, about probably going to fill the gap. But look at that. But this TLT, I really struggled with this because that's a very big volume. But that isn't a huge volume. This is not the same kind of – Look, at and not only that, it's had volume at the top. It's had volume at the bottom. So I'm, I'm just saying I think that the U.S. bonds can have a really good rally here, a bounce – but I'm not, this is not, in this case, look, right there, it's the day before for bonds that you had the usual, it has to be the day off. It can't be, it, there's a technique that I use, but it's a sub-technique. It is not the real technique of the Chapman Wave. Volume, price, climax, low. Okay, so I'm just saying, I don't think the TLT has done it. In other words, I think it, it's really good for a bounce, but it missed the ictus. It missed that exact day. That's the day. Uh, in the TLT, it worked out fine, but the bonds, it didn't. But the TLT volume is just a, a, a little bit higher than it was. Look at this. Volume, I'm going to give you a total volume. Uh, volume, 57 million on the 20th. And 59 on the, on the 3rd. Yeah. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So I can't believe that I had Lily on my list, just kind of background, I didn't kind of follow it all that much, and I remember reading about all the stuff going on, diabetes, um, diabetes, it's just huge uh, uh, in the United States, uh, actually all around the world, but especially the United States, and especially young kids, oh, it's just it's so sad, it's just so unnecessary. Uh, I mean, you know, some of us who actually do have diabetes, it's just that uh, we manage it, manage it uh, fine. But um, as, a, as a kid, it's just so cumbersome. It's all the, all the stuff that you have to do. So anyway, Lily is up $73 at $527, uh, up 16%. The leg C in the daily, leg F slash C in the weekly, and a leg G slash C in the monthly. And I... I all I can say is that when you get a kind of a breakthrough drug, it will be the same thing with Alzheimer's when they finally do something that is more affordable and something that really shows benefits. It will have just whatever the company or companies that are involved in something like that. So, Lily, this is this is a big move to the upside. Eli Lilly, large pharma. Um, this is a spectacular move. Yes, at some point it'll come down maybe to the 480, maybe even fill the gap to the 450s. But this is this has given a huge um, entrance into those. I mean, as it stands, you've gone from the 100 level just uh, two or so years ago to the 500 level. But uh, I think as as a a weapon, an assault against something like diabetes, which is pervasive, um, this is a spectacular move. So I'm not talking about the chart right now. I'm talking about the company. I'm talking about the actual uh, results that seem to be uh, much more positive. And all I can say is that it's going to really benefit the company. And any time it just gets mashed to the downside for whatever reason, look at it as something to buy and hold in your portfolio. I wouldn't even be surprised if this is a, a generational thing that – uh, on the next big pullback, you could buy it and kind of keep it in the family for, for like ExxonMobil, something like that. Because this is, if it's going to follow through, 
uh, this is going to be even bigger. Uh, we'll see what happens. All right. So I just want to get that out of the way. I uh, now I need to finish up. Look, gold. So the question came in, is a GDX, is this the time for the GDX uh, leg D to the downside? Um, and the dollar being in leg, it's little peak D, it's going to a leg, uh, if we can go a little higher, it can go to a leg E. I, I'm i thinking that the dollar, the way the dollar has acted, the way that the lowercase h has gone to a lowercase m, let me just show you for those of you who are new to my work, this is the pattern I'm talking about. I took three particular uh, lines. One is a straight line up or a straight line down. One is where it curves like a cup. And the other is like an arch, and you can have a mix of the two. When it comes down like that, makes the arch, fails at a peak A or a B, it can go to a C like it did there. This is the dreaded H pattern. Um, watch out when it takes out the left side low. You can do a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. And on the upside, we've seen that. The dollar's doing this. It's making these little reverse Y patterns, and it keeps taking out the upside. But all I can say is that, oh, and the lowercase h can go to a lowercase m, and a lot depends on how it takes out from the left side low if it has within two bars or within the same bar that it takes out. If it closes above, it can have a rally to the left side nearest peak or a gap or a moving average. And in this case, that says in the weekly chart or in the daily chart, we'd be looking at this particular high right here of 103 Point fifty seven, but it's really 103.17 is the 200 period exponential moving average that's been a repellent, was a propellant for just a brief moment, and then it became a really serious repellent, and we'll see. But I would just say to you, based on the MACD, based on the 9 EMA, based on the um, stochastic at 82% in the daily, based on the rising high, look at the beautiful divergence between the MACD back when it made a low uh, I would say it was early April in the 100 and 100 point 20, 100 point 79 uh, low back the week of the 14th of April. Now, when we're making lows back in the, the week of the 14th and 21st weeks of the 14th and 21st of of July, look how nicely the, the MACD was. It, it reversed and started coming up. It was way higher and the stochastic was higher. So I'm just saying to you, don't mess around, especially since you've got the, you you can see now the uh, pervasive selling pressure. Dow's now down 453. S&P's down 50. Dow's down 1.27 percent. S&P's down 1.11. What's the QQQ? QQQ's down 1.47. This is serious stuff. Um, after yesterday's, what a false move to the upside. Oh, we had a question the other day about false moves, and I was talking about it and saying. It's kind of a right shoulder failure pattern, not more than a, than a uh, rogue wave. Uh, I don't want to go through that now, other than to say the dollar is telling us right now that the market is responding both to um, the rally in the dollar, yeah, and that's part of it, but it's it's to me it's all the story about the moving averages. I mean, it's, uh, the, this is the this is the technical tool of last resort that I talk about. Let's just show you again. Look, the Indu, the Dow. Oops, it was on the wrong chart right here. Let me just show you this one more time. And I, I now I need to go back to the chart that I was showing you the other day. I said I won't do it today. That was yesterday because it's just, it's, we'll have to see what happens. Well, look at this. The nine period moving average is still way above the 14, but all of a sudden you've got this little turn down in the 14 period moving average. You see the turn down in the nine. All of a sudden you've got parallel. When you've got parallel moves, um, that means that if it crosses positive or negative, you've got torque to the upside. And that builds to momentum. In this case, the momentum to the upside is slowing down, and we could get torque to the downside. We've got it in. All the other indices, plus my key, which is the SMHs, now down 3.84 152.07. So I would not ignore that. So yes, the dollar is part of it, but I look, look at this. Let me just show you gold using this. Look, you can see the patterns making the dreaded H pattern right here. You can see the pink moving average in the daily chart of gold. Here's the GDX. It's even worse because it's about to take out the left side low. Um, internal low, internal, sorry, 
Internal low, residual low. Big move up. Internal high, residual high. Poof. And now we're coming down. I can't call this an internal low just yet because of the steepness, but we'll see what happens. All right. So I'm just saying to you, I, I just I don't see anything there. That's why we got out of our GDX the other day. Um, all right. So now let's go back to our story because I've got all these charts that I've got to go through. So let me just finish this up here. Um, crude oil. Crude oil made a peak D, and now it's pulling back. Uh, sorry, peak D, and then it went to the peak E at exactly, look at this, Chapman Wave technique of left side, right side price time match. You're talking about, um, I chose this particular candle right here. So on the April, the week, of, uh, so on the 14th, is that the one? No, the 12th of April, 2023, goes to peak C with the Chapman Wave two bar reversal right there. 8371, 8362. It acts almost like a, a D, but it didn't, it didn't make it. And there's the 200-period group in the average, and it plunges, and it plunges through that particular low right there, crude oil, and then it had this beautiful cup formation, and it went to the day that I typed in. Hi, and now it's pulling back, but it's still holding very well. I'll be back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I mentioned in the den is Full Ray, uh, Full Ray Brands, Inc. trading at uh, up, it's at 269 up 46 cents. 
right on the 200 period moving average. This is a fabulous move. But, uh, and the weekly chart says is a cup formation. It should have resistance coming up very soon. Um, let's see, trading at the 200 period moving average. The high that was made on the left side in the weekly chart was 2.87. Uh, 2.87, yeah, and today's high is 2.77. I think it's going to try to tag that. Then I think it should hang around you for a little bit. It tends to do that. It has a big gap up. It's got a huge gap that it, 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 it will take a little time to fill that gap. But I do, And today's got a gap. So I like the action very much. Is it a longer-term buy and hold? Uh, if you're looking at the high that was made up in the 60s once upon a time, back in January or February 2021, that's one thing. But this is, I think, this is in the, uh, I think Till Ray is in the um, cannabis sector. So let me just see what MJ is doing. MJ is doing, yeah, it's just kind of stuck. You know, there are a whole bunch of things going on. But if Till Ray is showing that it's starting to produce Profits, that's all it's all about. It's about profits. If it's doing that, then it could soon become a leader in the field, even though it's only trading in the uh, $2-$3 area. Okay, yeah, good good eye. Um, who was that? Uh, Tilray. Tilray. San L in the den, yeah. Uh, breaking V point on a good volume. Okay, well, I think that's the technique of A to B equals C to D. Um, all right. Uh, the VIX index right now, remember, I, I got a little worried a couple of days ago, I said it's just too quick to come off highs and have the VIX index have that big spike on Friday like that, woof, up into the 17s. Uh, I said if it's going to be of importance, it's going to sustain. And then lo and behold, you get this spectacular session yesterday. And look, look how the VIX held. It, it went just under 16. And now it's trading at 17.88. This is a little more serious in that it's saying the cluster formation after the gap up, and we'll go to the gap up of the 2nd of uh, August, the way it's holding makes this 18.55 200 period exponential moving average, which it hasn't even visited, let alone uh, uh, for, uh, it's been close, but it, it hasn't touched it since that whole cluster of, of highs back in March of 2023. Remember, that's when we, we still long the, the Dow from that particular stage and some others. So now what we're looking at is, Yes, there's action in the volatility index and the VIX, and that's just telling us that that monthly chart where I showed you this long, horizontal, thick uh, mauve color, light mauve color that goes back to where the prices went down to the eight, to the 11 area, 10.28 back in July of 2014, 8.84, then 8.8856 back in uh, late 2017 and then it just lifted off and then that move line became almost like a propellant all of a sudden we went back and touched it over the last two months third month is this month and boom we're up to the, to the upside and that makes the whole area of the 19s really strong monthly resistance in the daily in the weekly chart and i'm just going to go to the highs that were made back in the 20 week of the 26th of may of seven 820.81 and 21.32. All I can say is <clears throat> if the volatility index remains over 16, it's going to put pressure on the downside in the market. If it actually starts to touch the 20s, we will start to see big moves up in the VIX that, that, that sees triple, big triple digit down moves in the Dow and big percentage moves in the, in the um, S&P. But the closing price might be something very different as the market tries to establish some kind of a base. But in the meantime, we're only coming off this, the tops that were made. And if uh, you can believe it, look at this. The QQQ, one, two, three. The QQQ was like a blink of an eye away from the 408.71 high of November of 2021 in this beautiful cup formation. It went to 387. I mean, three, you can see by today's action down 5.32. You could have been there in a couple of days. And now we're pulling back. Peak D in the weekly chart. Beautiful left side, right side price time match. Look at this. To the week. Look at that. To that exact low right there. It went right to there. And now it will take much longer. It will take until round about September maybe. Maybe even October. 
before we can start to head back towards the 408. So that means a little digestive phase, a little, I say little because of, of price wise, so far it's just a little bit. We'll see where it comes down to. 380, oh, I'm sorry, I meant to say 360 <clears throat> is the 14 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart. Okay, now the couple of other questions. And, and Nike, yeah, NKE, Nike is trading kind of poorly right now on the day, but actually it's just in this cluster formation sideways. I have, I have to tell you something. When you get to sports and sportswear, I'm looking around. I happen to. I just wear whatever I wear when I play tennis or I'm mean, outdoors. I'm not. Um, I don't have to have any. Yeah, I, I laugh at this. Have you seen a bicyclist without the uh, tire? I mean, there was a time where, as kids, we hopped on a bike. It doesn't matter what you were wearing. You hopped on your bike and you rode it. Now, everything you do, you've got to have the fashion. You, uh, should I take the time now to talk about fashion, to talk about all the things that are going on? No, nah, I'm not going to waste time. I, I, will, I will not be making any changes to uh, history. So um, I, I'll talk about it as we go each day. But yes. What's going on now in the fashion world is telling me, and then just a bunch of things. I, I, I want to include um, the uh, figure eights. I want to include all sorts of things, uh, roller coasters and everything in what I'm looking at for what I call the next big phase. This is going to be the big phase for the coda phase. I don't know how long the coda phase will take. We've been in different coda phases, but not the ultimate coda phase. I, I'm just mentioning that right now. So Nike says to me, People are still buying the stuff because they want to look good. They just want, and, and like sheep, we all tend to do the sort of the same sort of thing. Have you noticed that you can barely find a person who wears the cap backwards? It used to be just de rigueur. Everywhere you went, especially the older guys were wearing it. Now it's only the older guys, the young guys, hardly ever put it backwards. Uh, it's just the way fashion is. It's not a comment on whether you're a good person or a bad. It's just the way things work. All right, and I'm looking at this. I'm saying Nike has held well so far because of that very factor, the fashion factor. But it's telling me that if it closes under 105, anytime, and I'll say this week, it needs to be really quickly, then you're looking at this pattern that says, uh-oh, watch out for the dreaded H pattern because you could test the 103s. That was the left side low. Now, talk about fashion. Wow, what did I do just a moment ago? And I wanted to point it out. Was it Tilray? T L R Y? No, it wasn't. Oh, no. Let me just check and see if I can even find it in my list of what I looked at. NJVIX, Crudo. Oh, A R W R. Um, yeah, look at this pattern. Chart patterns are, are just. It doesn't matter. Can you believe we are Arrowhead Pharma, a biotech? Here's your lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m, and whew, it takes it out. Wait a minute. Is this a pattern we've seen before? Wait a minute. What on earth has the TLT got to do with um, ARWR, Arrowhead? Nothing. Just the chart pad. There it is. Lowercase h becomes a lowercase m, whoosh, towards the 9185. Okay. I'll be right back. That's a chapter. I get it. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Just wanted to show you this quickly. So you got a peak C1, C2 in the one minute chart twice. You got peak D, it's X like a peak D. You got your you're right there with the doji candle at 9.31 this morning at 45.11. Come plummeting down, and now you're in this pattern that says the H pattern, holding the left side low, could bounce. So you'll look first for the left side high, which in this case is 44.92. We're at 44.90.50 right now. But there's a chance. What happens at the 44.95 to 44.98? Point fifty area, it's called 9448, is going to be imperative to monitor. Why? <clears throat> because the selling pressure, you know, 10, 20, I always say in the morning, uh, that's where the next phase of the market starts. And that kind of goes to about, <clears throat> excuse me, about 1230 or maybe even 110, and then a whole nother phase. And then you've got your three o'clock to 310 or 315 period. Well, this is going to be important because after yesterday, you realize that yesterday, because it held so well and kept making higher highs, there are a lot of people that say, oh, that has to be a low. <clears throat> Not only that, you've got bonds turning up, yields will be coming down, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't quite work that way because selling pressure has to do with the um, – has to do with the momentum of your bullish indicators starting to fail. And for me, that is – in this case, I'm just going back to this again. Let's go to the S&P. And that is the S&P's nine-period expansion moving average. And the day is young. It has gone pink, but this is the first time it's gone pink. It's taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight days, nine days since it made the 4507 high on the 27th. That's instead of just being an immediate sell-off, it's just a whole process, and I've called it a process. So... That just says to me, don't mix things up. Yes, you could have a one-minute bounce. You could have a 10-minute bounce. But the overall action, and I'm going to say once again, I, I might be totally wrong here. But I think, and, and this is what the answer I gave the other day to the sectors and which sectors. And I said, at this point, it's a little risky because you've lost the momentum of getting the exact top or very close to the exact top. But if I'm correct in the SMHs, the semiconductors, they usually lead the markets up and they usually lead the markets down. And NVIDIA has been such a spectacular move. We had some, someone email me the other day to say it's 300 and whatever it was, uh, PE. Yeah, 
that's okay. It didn't matter when it was going up to the all-time high. Just recently at the peak, C1, C2 has got a C3, even a C4 right now, failing to get to a D. 480 was the, was that the 480? Yeah, 480.88 was the high. And it's not doing badly today. It's only down six. It's not a big deal. 400, uh, 488.88. I think I said 480.88. I'll have to check that out. Um, but it is starting to move down. Advanced micro devices had great, a uh, great earnings and outlook and everything, and yet it has gone uh, from that big candle that shot up to almost 120 down to 107. And now it's trading at 113, just stuck sideways. If you're looking at, I'm not going to go through them all. I'm just saying this to me is the clue. If the semiconductor index continues to slide to the downside, it doesn't have to spectacularly roll over. It just keeps moving lower and lower. That's just saying to me that one of my key metrics, one of the areas that I consider to be really important, I've spoken about this before, the, the chips for the last uh, 40 to 50 years have become as important as crude oil was for the 1900s. So the chips are the crude oil of today for the economy. And if they start to move down and if they sort of leading the all-time highs, look at this, all-time highs. Who would have even have dreamt that the semiconductors could go from 159 to 85 and then back to 100, uh, was it 61 Point seventeen was the high on the 31st, trading at 152. Big deal, down nine points. But I have to tell you that it's uh, it looks toppy in the daily. The weekly uh, is still holding really well. Uh, so I'm waiting to see because if you start to see the semiconductors, SMH down the 148 to sorry 146 to 144 area in August. I think it'll be dragging the market down. That's what I'm saying. The question was, what, what sectors? And I'm saying the semiconductors is one. Uh, any of the major I indices, especially now the IWM, uh, that's just really weak, the small caps. So all right, let's get back to our story. Could I look at Ulta, Ulta Beauty? Well, Ulta Beauty got decimated. Spoke about this for ages. Uh, at 560.60, I was saying, this is an unbelievable, look how quickly, I said, whenever you move very quickly in the Chapman wave to peak, to peak, to peak, to peak, higher peak, higher peak, with very little rest, when you come down, it's usually a pretty sharp pullback. It doesn't mean to say that you're necessarily going to sell signal to sell mode immediately. This is a monthly chart I'm talking about. Wow, this is in a sell mode. And now it's trading at 437. It looks terrible. What has taken its place is ELF. And ELF is just about to do the same thing. Um, I'm sorry, the same thing on the upside, it sort of took it took the lead, and ELF is uh, in cosmetics, and here it is, 137.48 high, about uh, six sessions ago, but it also had a 132 round number low on the 2nd of August, that day that it made its all-time high. I, it might fill in the gap, but it's holding really well, so this is now the new leader, uh, ELF. Elf Beauty Inc. Uh, Cosmetics watching this one. I'm also watching XPO. I mentioned this for subscribers to my opening call. This is the tracking, less than full shipping, XPO Inc. Um, we're looking at it at 72.19, only down nine cents. As long as this holds up, it says there are certain areas of the economy that are holding well. Bitcoin, BTC. So Bitcoin, I've been kind of uh, remiss in following it. We had this once with the Bitcoin, the BGTC, BGTC. The Bitcoin, uh oh, B, G, T, C. No, B, B, T, G, C. Oh, God. No, no, come on, Bitcoin. Uh, B, Bitcoin futures continuous, G, B, T, C. There it is. Uh, Bitcoin Investment Trust, we once had in the 12s, had two positions ready, short term and long term. We never did anything with the short term, we just held it. We went all the way to 58. We took lots and lots of profits, and then I just kind of ignored it for ages. Once or twice, we tried again, it didn't work. Just ignored it. I think it's going to be back. You see these long wick candles? That's usually an error. That's usually something that happens. It's just the funniest thing on earth. I remember Tom and Brian, we spoke about this, oh, years and years ago. We said, isn't it funny that on our chart formations, we look at charts all the time. When there's an, uh, some kind of a, um, an error in reporting and it doesn't get changed, sometimes the price actually goes down. That price is now at 10, but the price is at, uh, that is the, the wick has a lower round about the 10s and it's trading at 19. I wonder if that'll ever be full. But at the same time, 
I think Bitcoin has a place. Uh, I don't personally own any, uh, but I think it has a place. And subscribers, we're out of everything. I'm waiting for the next move that says to me, you've got some signals that suggest it's got a, oh, this is a pretty good, from October, from under eight to 21, that's a huge gain. It's not like it was 12 to uh, 58. But yeah, this is, I think it will be ready. I'm not ignoring it. I'll just give you parameters now, just based on the Bitcoin itself, the futures. Um, and I'm just saying 27.66 is the 200 period exponential moving average. And a 32 area is the resistance. It's just stuck there for the moment. I think there's one more pullback, and now the pullback holds is going to be the thing. And that's the point. So, oh, we've got one more break to go. Oh, no, I haven't even got to some of the stocks. Um, yeah, I'll be back in a moment. We're going to look at the TNX. That's the 10 year year. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So in the one minute chart, we've now got this pattern that I call the H to M pattern, lowercase H to lowercase M pattern. There's a chance that we should still make one pop up, but if in this long rectangle formation, pops a little bit, the one, the E-mini pops a little bit, say, towards the 44.95 area, and then comes back and then takes out the midpoint of the rectangle of 4486. Uh, There's a real quick chance that it can go down to the low and then take that out. That's going to be, be, be real careful because you've got maybe 20 minutes now in which to get to 44. 
4497 to 4502. If it doesn't do that, this market's going to be really disappointed. And it means that rallies are just doomed to fail uh, without any any much of a bounce at all. Any much of a bounce. Anyway, any much of a bounce. All right, so here we go. Um, question came in about the TNX. Yes, that is a peak D, and there is a pullback. Is a peak D in the weekly? Well, a leg D it hasn't become a peak. We have to wait for Friday's close. But I've been suggesting that your yields are stuck in the range for quite for a while, and they're still stuck in the range. So with that, I'm going to just see. Did I get a question? Yeah, I did get a question. I wrote it down. Wrote it down. Wrote it down. Oh, uh, XLF. You haven't spoken about the financials. Yeah, XLF is pulling back a little bit. It's not a big deal. This is at 34.73, and so is KRE. This is the regional banks pulling back. Um, I'm really watching this closely because um, usually the, the the bank the banks will go higher with the yields going higher. But now I think we start to see a stall. So we're watching a lot of things right here. I'm going to also mention crude oil one more time. Crude oil. <clears throat> has gone to a peak E in the daily chart. Well, I have to wait for today, but this is a Chevron Wave Roman candle. So watching it closely, because if crude oil at 81 right now actually takes out 78.50 at any point in the 77, 21, 200 period moving average becomes a bank. So I'm watching crude oil. It did have a fantastic rally. It's a little toppy right now. Have a wonderful rest of the day and stay tuned for Steve Rhodes. I'll be back with Tom later on.